and welcome to the 64 doors. Today we're going to open door 56. Here we find an archetype that is all about pleasure, curiosity and storytelling. As usual, we're going to bridge the gap between human design and gene keys when we look at this archetype. Right now, we have the sun in gate 56 and the earth in gate 60. The design part of the cross is gate 50 and gate 3. In human design, we call this cross the right angle cross of laws. So it has the 56, the 60, the 3, and the 50. In a couple of days, we're going to go into the cross of stimulation, and then in another couple of days, the cross of distraction. So every time we have a gate that is um, activated by the sun is going to be activated for 5.7 days and it's going to change crosses every day. Um, here we can see that the first cross has a different design than the other two cross. So here we have we have the fifth that has to do with values, with responsibility, and the three that is the eternal child uh, in the gene case. It's also about going from chaos to ordering. Um, and on the two other crosses, it's much more about uh, the risk taking, about the game player, and also about being able to, to drink from your cup and also give to the other, so kind of altruism. So if you have the 56 in your uh, personality sun or your life's work, make sure that you go in here and read about your exact cross. It has a lot to do with your destiny. And you can also go into your profile in, in the Gene Keys and read about your um, activation sequence. The activation sequence and the incarnation cross are the same thing. So the same for gates, the same for gene keys, and they are explained in a slightly different way, uh, depending on if you look at human design or the gene keys. If we go back to the body graph and we look at the standard view, uh, we can see that we have the 56 that comes out of the throat center and meets the 11 in the Ashna center. Uh, in human design, this is a channel of curiosity, a design of a seeker. The reference theme is you are a pure seeker, which means you're never supposed to achieve any final goal. Only when you let go of the idea of attainment altogether, you can rest and find peace in the journey itself. So this archetype is what we call the comed comedian. It's always playing a, a role of life. It's always telling a story. Um, and next day there's a new story to tell. So it's never, an end goal. It's always this enrichment of life with more experiences that are stimulating both in, in their own life and in other people's lives. Uh, some of the key words for, for the comedian is sensations, stimulation, and aliveness. The eternal motivator is feeling sensuality and believe. This is a throat gate like we were just seeing. So this is a voice and the voice is I believe. And that's what keeps this archetype going because it knows that there is something more. And in, in human design, we also call it the wanderer because it just walks. It's a kind of vagabond that is um, accumulating experiences and, and telling those experiences uh, so that other people also can get enrich, enriched. Um, and the Achilles heel could be that this archetype learns through pain and pleasure. So those always the contrast that makes us learn. And it's an archetype that seldom sits still. Some of the positive attributes are humor, knowing the good in life, and like we were just saying, it's the ultimate storytelling. Um, and if we go into the gene keys, the gene keys has a little bit of a different ways of looking at a gate. So in the gene keys, we always have a frequency band from a very low frequency that we call the shadow that is contracted, it's a fear frequency, to higher frequencies of more expansion, openness, and love. So as human beings, we have access to the whole range in this frequency band. We can go down into the shadow, but we can also open up to more expansion and love. So the three words that you're going to see when you go into the living library um, are, the, are what describe 
the frequency band. So distraction is the shadow, enrichment is the gift, and intoxication is the city. You're also going to see that the programming partners, so when we were looking at the cross in um, the incarnation cross, you could see that we have the sun in 56 and we have the earth in 60. So that is what in the gene keys we call the programming partners. They are on opposite sides in the rave mandala. And the rave mandala is the same as saying the astrological wheel. So here we have limitation and distraction. And you can see how these go together. When you have distraction, it's limiting you, right? Um, and the same thing with the gift frequency, enrichment and realism. And what I like to say with the 60s is actually magical realism. This is a re realism in the 60s where the structures that can look um, and feel limiting in the in the shadow frequency become this banks of the river so that the river can really flow, the structures that, that gives you the possibility to, to flow and, and to build. Um, I really like the I Ching of this one. So the Wanderer is the name of the, of the archetype in the I Ching. It's fire over mountain. And here we have uh, fire blazing atop the mountain. From the stability of right action comes the rapturous delight of passion um, and passionate appreciation, right? And that is the comedian because whatever role it's playing, it's passionate about it. And it, it's appreciative even of like we're saying, the pain and the pleasure. Um, this is an interesting astrology as well, because it's one of those gene keys that are on the cusp of two astrological signs. So the actual, the actual rave mandala is going to be in eight different astrological signs. You can see here we have both Cancer and Leo. Here we have both Aquarius and Capricorn. We have Scorpio and Libra, and we have Aries and Taurus. So in the 56, we have Leo, the illuminated leader and the courageous creator, and it's fixed fire, courageous and, and creative. And then Cancer is what we've been in now for a month, and it's the life bringer, the nurturer, the caregiver, and it's about caring and, and communion. And this is the service to other in cancer. And then the Leo is the service to self or self growth. When we look in the integral human design, so this would be the same thing as when we were looking before in the circuitry, the channel of curiosity is the human design way of looking at it. And it doesn't have the frequency band. Uh, often when we speak about the channel, we're going to see what is the 11 and the 56, what are they together? And what is the 56 on its own? So here you can see the 56 on its own. Here it says people who use their past experiences in order to illustrate their concepts and stimulate others. But then there is going to say in the description without the 11, the 56, and then that expression, like if it only has half, it's kind of not complete, right? That's not the way that uh, integral human design and the gene is looking at it. Uh, so here we have the channel of entertainment, and it is about curiosity. The lower frequency, frequency is aimlessness, and you can you can see that yourself when you have when you have that distraction in the fifty six. And the shadow frequency of the eleven is about obscurity, so there is like an aimlessness to it. But then when we go up to the gift frequency, the the fifty six is all about enrichment, and the eleven is all about your own idealism. Then it's, it becomes becomes magic and, and entertaining and it's a stream of fulfillment um, then the code and ring of trials so this is i feel like this is kind of the most important part of the transmission of the 56 it's all about trials and here you can see this is um the gene case diary so this is jane adams blog and here we can see the code and ring of trials. So it has the 12, the 56, and the 37. And these are all stop codons. So they are all connected and they are kind of, they are ending one era and helping us coming into another era. So we can see in humanity what makes us stuck and not evolve is the distraction, the continuous distraction of 
of having kind of so many things to scatter our attention on. And then we have the vanity in the 12 and the forgetting why we're even here in the, in the 33, because many times we forget to retreat uh, in the 33. And with the 12, we forget our pure heart or, or actually we forget searching for that or seeing that, um, discerning that, discriminating that in others. So vanity, distraction, forgetting are those trials for humanity that we are more and more becoming aware of so that we can, so that we can open up for the higher frequencies of enrichment, mindfulness, and discrimination. And the beautiful cities are purity, revelation, and intoxication. Uh, I also love the, the blog because it's painting the dream arc, the, the three frequencies of the dream arc every week. So it opens up usually the day the transit opens up. So every six days you have a new blog. And there's so many interesting you know, ways of just tapping in a very much more creative and, and right brain way. And here we have the mudra that you also can, can buy, I think, in the, in the living library. This is the mudra, Richard Rudd's mudra. And... Uh, and so if we, if we think this week about distraction, like what are the things in a day that distract you? Maybe this is a good idea to start in the morning and have a paper and just write, what do you do in the day? Write down everything and write down the, the, the time of it. And then at the end of the day, you see how many of the things that you're doing that actually were meaningful. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say the things that are productive because that's often when we write on, down this list, often what we wanna discern is, oh, am I pro productive enough? Am I efficient enough? That's not the reason for really doing this. It's more about what are the things on my list that are meaningful for me? What are the things on the list that are bringing me true enrichment? Those are the important things to ask. And then, I'm going to look if there are any other questions. Um, yeah, and these are actually Rosie Aronson's questions that I really loved for this uh, transit. So, for example, the distractions can even have to do with not being able to say no to things. Because when you say yes to everything, you kind of become scattered. It's a little bit like the 16th archetype um, that is, have inspiration for so many things. So the 16th that is so curious as the as the 56 both can kind of get carried away. So are you a, do you feel like you're able to say no? Or in what situations are you unable to say no? It kind of leads you to distract yourself or spread yourself thin. Um, do you know when you overindulge and when do you deprive yourself of things? Because here we have uh, an archetype that is all about pleasure and sensations. We didn't speak so much about that. This is kind of more, in a way the the city frequency i often say to people to live more through their, sen their senses but in the low frequency this archetype lives basically only through the senses so it becomes just a kind of distract distraction or overindulgence and so also overstimulation of course comes with that and when you do this list, if you do it maybe for a week, you can probably highlight, write down what are the most powerful distractions so that you know that, so that you can kind of you know, discriminate as they come in. It's a little bit the same as with archetype uh, 24. That pause that happens when you open the fridge and you're about to take something to you know, maybe distract yourself from your emotions, for example, when you emo do emotional eating. So this is a good week to kind of see where, where are you carried away and, and can you pause before actually putting your energy into something. Um, and then it's an amazing week to think about what does enrich your life? What are the things in your life that are really, that are really creating that sense of, of meaning um, and to, if you don't have them or if you have them only once a week, maybe schedule time for enrichment. For me, it's like every day has to be worth living. I used to be, when I had deadlines and, and things like that, I used to be like, okay, this week is just going to be 
working for the deadline and it felt like I didn't have a life up until then. And I'm refusing now to have one day where I go to bed and I feel like the day wasn't worth it. And of course, that is, that's subject, subjective. So who says if a day is worth it or not? Only you can say that. Only you can know if a, if a day was worth it for you or, or if it wasn't. And then it's also a good week to think about, you know, generosity and when are you enriching somebody else's life and what are your favorite ways of doing that? For example, we know that there are five love languages and we all have different ways of giving and receiving love. So maybe think about what are your ways? What are the ways for you that are easy and natural to enrich other people's life that feels like, you know, just it's flowing from your heart in a generous way. Um, so I'm wishing everybody a really pleasurable week in, in the transit of the 56 and I will see you next week.